What's the charge, please? Carol's driving and operating a defective vehicle, Your Honor. Young man, this report shows that you are operating a motor car with brakes only 20% efficient. Is that correct? I guess so, Judge. And you were arrested for careless driving. Is that true? He says so. Defendant found guilty of careless driving is charged. Hold his car until it's repaired. Fine will be ten dollars. See you again, bud. <laughs> Sir, hold on the court. Change that sentence to thirty days. Young man, I tried to be lenient with you and overlook your indifferent attitude. But evidently, you need more of a lesson than I thought. Oh, Judge, I can't do that. I'll get my car fixed up, but gosh, I'd lose my job. Your job? What about other people's jobs? What about their safety and happiness and well-being? Suppose through your carelessness, someone had been injured until he couldn't work. Your full name, please. Bill, or uh, William S. Hardaway. Age? 22. Married? No, sir. Where do you live? With my brother-in-law, Ned Cummings, out at 4784 Charlotte Street. Young man, you must learn to drive so that accidents can't happen. I wonder how many people in this courtroom know the terrible price we pay for accidents. Accidents cost this nation well over three billion dollars per year. Nine million dollars every day. Over a hundred dollars every second. But money isn't the price. No. In less than seven years, automobiles alone have taken the lives of more United States citizens than have been killed in all the wars of this nation's history. Hard, cold statistics. They can give us no possible conception of the other factors involved. The hours and days of agony for the injured, heartbreak and suffering, want and privation for innocent dependents, broken homes, shattered dreams, all a part of the intangible human side of those figures. And the great tragedy is that these things can be prevented and are therefore utterly inexcusable. We, you and I, are guilty of letting them happen. We can prevent them. You can prevent them. You must prevent them by driving so that accidents can't happen. Now this young man here pleads guilty to careless driving and operating a defective vehicle typical of thousands of minor cases before this court. But I want to show you what might have happened, or what might yet happen, if he doesn't do some very serious thinking in the time I've given him. I'm well acquainted with his brother-in-law, Ned Cummings, a well-respected, law-abiding, hard-working citizen of this city. Calling Cruiser 71, Cruiser 71, go to 12th and Jackson, investigate auto accident, 
Accident at 12th and Jackson. Investigate and report. That is all. K-G-P-E. Well, Ned, old boy, here's one for your scrapbook. Two killed at a railroad crossing. Three injured, one seriously. The driver apparently didn't see approaching train. <laughs> boy, the fools will get it, won't they? Cruiser 7-1 to headquarters. 7-1. Arriving at Clawson Jackson. Stand by for report. Say, don't you ever get tired of listening to those cops yap back and forth? That's all you ever do. Pipe down. I want to hear this. 7-1 to headquarters, Carlson Jackson, no one injured. Holding one driver for failing to heat stop sign. Both cars badly damaged. Sento cars. Nobody hurt. Oh, well, better luck next time, Ned. Say, what are you so wrapped up in this stuff for, anyhow? You live accidents. You read about them, you sleep them, you breathe them. Darned if I don't believe you'd like to have one serve your coffee every morning. As I've told you many times before, Bill, my next promotion is the safety engineer. Of course I'm interested. Why shouldn't I be? Anyone ought to be. And if you could see past the end of your nose, my boy, you'd know I'm right. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I can take care of myself in an automobile, all right. Sure. You can take care of yourself. But what about the other people? Don't they have any rights? No, Bill. You're a swell kid. And everybody likes you. You don't deliberately drive like a fool. You're just a little careless, that's all. A little more so than the average driver. Which probably means that you'll get it just a little bit quicker. Hello, Ann. Hello. Thank you, Billy. There you are. Polite enough to get up and give Ann a chair. Yet you go out on the street and act as though you had a bone to pick with everybody you meet. You know, common courtesy, used behind the wheel as it is everywhere else, would prevent about half of these accidental deaths you read about. Oh, uh, I better move out to the doghouse. Where's the kid, honey? He's over at the school trying out for junior safety patrolman. Looks like he's taking after Daddy. Or have you been encouraging that, too? later every uh, night, and uh, I have to go to school every morning a uh, half hour earlier, so don't be worried about me. All right, Mickey, what's the important business? I'm a safety patrolman now. It was a sin. Nice yeah. going. Congratulations, son. Thanks, Dad, but I sure won't forget who helped me out. Oh, you did it on your own, son. Next year, I'd like to be captain of the safety council anyway. Chip off the old block. Oh, excuse it, Mickey. I didn't mean anything by it, but they sure seem to be spending a lot of time on that stuff nowadays. We didn't learn anything like that when we were kids. We didn't need to. Automobile drivers weren't killing 30,000 people a year in those days. The kids are learning it, even if some of the grown-ups aren't, that it's just as important to stay alive as it is to make a living. Bill, I'll bet you Mickey knows more about the traffic rules of this city right now than you do. And he doesn't even drive an automobile yet, either. Uh, I'll bet you. I'd like to put both of you in a car and prove it to you. Okay, you're on. All right, Mr. Hardaway, let's see who can spot the first one. I can, Pop. That car back there had the right of way over you. Where was that? Right back there. That fellow stopped for the stop sign. And when he does that, the intersection is supposed to be cleared for him, even if it is on a through street. <laughs> I admit it. I'm taking down a peg. Well, I guess we'll have to mark one up for Mickey. Well, even the best of us can't be too careful, you know. Bill, that's the wisest thing you've said today. Even the best of us can't be too careful. There goes another one, Pop. Yes, Mickey, there's one of the worst. Turning across traffic from the wrong lane. Why anybody pulls a boner like that, I can't figure out. Traffic just isn't expecting that kind of driving.
And turning right from the inner lane is just as bad. That causes accidents. Well, what do you suggest? Suppose you don't know you're going to turn till you get there. Then what? Go right on down the street, big boy, and around the block. That's the best and safest way out. All you need to remember is to go to the lane nearest the way you plan to turn. And in this case, go to the inner lane when you get around the corner. Turning right is simple. Just stick to the curve. Well, that looks like one for me anyway. Gosh! Look at that silly guy, will you? Now, Ned, there's something that is for you. Yes, Bill, that's one for you. The only place a pedestrian has any business is in the crosswalk. And whether the lines are painted there or not, it's still a crosswalk. And cars are supposed to stop when the pedestrian enters that territory. there's a safety zone in the middle, the pedestrian can only ask for half the street. All right, what can you do about guys like that? He's supposed to let people go on around. He should be over on his side of the street. That's right, Mickey. He can't hold up traffic like that. What do you mean he can't? He is, isn't he? Yes, I guess he is, Bill. These signs around town are, after all, just telling you the approximate speeds at which you can travel with safety. It's wise not to go too slow, and it's wise not to go any faster than the signs yeah, say. Well, I've heard that before. Yes, if I remember right, you have heard that a time or two. But because that sign says 35 miles an hour, it doesn't mean you've got to drive that fast. Nor does it mean you can poke along at 10 miles an hour and hold up traffic either. There's another one, Pop. That driver is not supposed to drive under those conditions. He's too crowded in there. Correct you are, son. We'll mark up another one for Mickey. I'll take that one, pulling away from the curb without looking back. Good for you, Bill. What about this one? Who's got the right of way? Quick. That fellow has. No, that one has over <laughs> there. Well, that's the way it is. It always ends in an argument. Just remember, boys, that it's a matter of giving instead of taking the right-of-way. As old Judge Tompkins once said, well, boys, you take the right-of-way, and they'll take you right away. And that's not an idle thought either. How can you tell for sure, though, Pop? Well, one way, for example, the car that's in the intersection first has the right-of-way over the other. That's simple, isn't it? Yeah, but... Yeah, I know, but... All right, suppose they're both there at the same time. Number one is you. Number two is coming from your left. You have the right-of-way. If he comes from your right, you must yield to him. Now, that's easy, isn't it? Well, I didn't know that before. No, Bill, there are a lot of people that didn't know that before. Here's another one. When you're turning left in an intersection, you must wait for the cars immediately before you. Those coming down the street must wait for you. And you can't pass streetcars on the left side. You're as wrong as wrong can be. That causes plenty of serious accidents. If there's a safety zone there, most traffic ordinances will let you pass, even if the streetcar is unloading, providing you're careful. That's a place to be really careful. There's no safety zone, stop. You'll be safe. And be sure to stop at the rear of the car. Well, now, how do you know what he's going to do? Well, Bill, Signals are signals. You at least know he's going to do something. It's better than no signal at all, isn't it? 
That's one for you, though, Bill. He shouldn't pull out into the middle of the street to turn right. Neither the man behind nor the driver in front knows what to do. Again, the best thing for you to do is simply slow down. Getting back to those speed limits we were talking about a while ago, Bill, it's this kind of a street that really causes accidents, right where we don't think they'll happen. Very few accidents happen on congested streets. It's the old idea that it's so dangerous it's safe. People are more careful. They slow down and stop quicker. Side streets and seemingly harmless crossings and streetcar tracks are the places where people get killed. An excellent example. There comes a streetcar that's hidden from traffic, crossing on a diagonal track. Most people know that's a dangerous crossing, and there's never been an accident on it yet. Over here is the same streetcar in open view, on top of a grade only half a block away. And several people have been killed at that crossing. Just carelessness, Bill. That's all you can say for it. It's the same old story when the streets are slated. The first day or so, there's few accidents. People are careful. They soon get careless. Get up a little speed, and then they can't stop. A little sense and some good treads on your tires are the only remedy. You can't use those old slick tires and get by. And the same thing applies when you're following someone. Driving too closely is suicide, Bill. Suppose he should run a wheel off. Or suppose he hits someone. You can't even see the accident coming. And you hit him full speed. And why do we drive slower at night? It's so we can stop quicker. The best lights in the world won't equal old man sunshine, Bill. You can't see these hazards at night. They seem to spring out of nowhere. Pedestrians, bicycle riders, jalopies, they put you on your metal, Bill. Headlights and slow speed are a darn good combination. Go on, Pop. How many did I get? Oh, shucks, Pop. Didn't you even keep track of them? Yes, son. I think it was about a draw, don't you? I still say I can take care of myself. And I expect the other fella to do the same. Don't depend on it, Bill. No matter what the other guy does, you've got to drive so that accidents can't happen. If everybody would learn to do that, accidents wouldn't happen. Honey, do you mind if I go over to Elmer's for a while? Could I go along? And why should you? Come on, get your coat on. No, honey, I was just kidding. When Sunday comes around, the old man sort of likes to lay around and take it easy, you know. You mean study some more facts, don't you? I guess so. But it looks like I'm going to get a chance to do something about it, at least in this town. And I just can't afford to let that chance go by. Blame me? You just keep right on. There's one partner who's behind you. You know that, don't you? You bet I do. How are you going to get over there? Walk. It's a long, long walk for a little girl like you. It's good for me. Well, I'll agree that it probably is. But I'm going to wring that brother-in-law's neck yet one of these days if he doesn't get that jalopy of his fixed. Somehow or other, he always manages to have a flat tire on Sunday. Sometimes I think he likes to drive a good car once in a while. Well, maybe that's good for him, too. He said he'd pick me up over there after a while, though, so his heart's in the right place. Bill's all right. Yeah, except sometimes. Mickey's over at Barrett's, honey. If he doesn't come home, will you call him for me? Either that or I'll be over there with him. Don't you worry about us. We'll get along all right. Bye. Bye, honey. Say, you going to show with us tonight? Sure thing, and I've got it all picked out. That's swell. Calling safety car four, safety car number four, a smash up at 16th and Wall Run. Report, report on accident at 16th and Wall Run. That is all, KGPE. Safety car four, one block away. Stand by.
Looks bad, headquarters. Better send a couple of wreckers. Ambulance is here. We'll need it. Looks like another reckless driver. Get a car broadside. Unconscious. Badly hurt. Send another ambulance and stand by. Sending driver to General Hospital. Stand by. Woman passenger still trapped. Car is a blue sedan. License number 61626. Oh. 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 Gee whiz, Pop, what's your hurry? woman passenger is dead. That is all. Mom! Where are you, Mom? Mom! He's almost conscious now. He wants to see him. I don't want to ever see him again. Afraid for that eye, but he's lucky to be alive. Ned. Yeah, fella, I'm here. It wasn't my fault, Ned. I saw that other car, but he didn't see me. Honest, he didn't. No, I guess he didn't, son. I had to hit him. Did I hit him very hard, Ned? Pretty hard, fella. Pretty hard. Ann. Ann. That's what I think. Ann, is Ann all right? Ann. Ned. Ned. Answer me, Ned. Ann, is Ann all right? meeting of the year. How's that for a break? Well, that's well, Ned. Power to you, old boy. How's this for an opening? You know, Bill, you got to drive it home to them. I want to give them a message they'll remember, one that they can use. Hey, Pop, take a look, will you? This arithmetic's got me stuck. Well, let's see here. Supposing we move that decimal point over there. Maybe it'll come out a little better, huh? Oh, sure. Gee, Pop, thanks. You're almost as smart as Mom was. All right, punk. Why don't you wash those dirty hands of yours? They're filthy. Oh, shucks, Pop. You just noticing that? Mom used to make me wash them all the time. But you hardly ever do. As I was saying, Bill, it doesn't do any good to get up there and let this stuff go in one ear and out the other. You just might as well not say anything. You gotta bring it home to him. Shut up, stop it! I can't stand it. Don't say anymore. All right, Bill, I'm sorry. You're sorry. 
I know you're on this. Everything you do, everything you say just throws it my face. You might as well yell murder at me and have it over with. write your speech, Ned. I'm for you, fella, every time. Bill, come back here. Don't worry about me, Ned. I'll be all right. Thank you. 